ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a presentation today about the Tylos software. It stands for Time Location Software or Schedule, and uh, it's a planning technique for obviously for projects which have got time and a distance, so roads, railways, pipelines, uh, etc. And so I want to talk a little bit about time location planning in general, but Tylos is not just a not just to paint a picture, uh, it's also got some advanced uh, project planning capabilities, resource management, cost management, and progress control. So, um, Talos opens up the uh, this sector to you. My name is Richard Ormrod. I've got a background in the construction industry and have been working with Talos for quite a long time. And I show this slide uh, at the beginning often because every picture tells a story and that is what a time distance diagram does. It allows you to convey the whole scheme on one piece of paper. Okay, it might be a big piece of paper, but everybody can understand what's going on. You don't have a book of uh, A3 bar charts or a massive network diagram that nobody can understand. You've got a picture and this is the earliest example that I could find. This is distance horizontally, and this is Napoleon's uh, invasion of Russia to Moscow and his retreat. So uh, the size of the rivers, the Brown River is, is the size of his army uh, heading out, and the Black River is the size of his army heading back. So you can see a huge amount of information once you understand that basic premise. And that's the same thing with a time distance diagram. So um, traditionally, you might be using various tools. So it might be P6, Power Project, Microsoft Project, others, where you've got a two activities that you link together with logic links, and you view those in a network diagram without a time scale. But nobody really uses that because everybody is going to convey that to somebody else by displaying it against a time scale. So then you get the bar chart the Gantt chart. And so that conveys more information. You can see that task B follows task A, both in start and in finish. But if you're working on a linear project, you've got an extra dimension to play with. You've got time and distance location. And it doesn't matter to Tylos which way around these diagrams are. You can have location vertically and time horizontally. Uh, and if this is traditionally the sort of what happens in the UK where we've got distance horizontally uh, in continental Europe's often the other way around. But then it doesn't matter which way the axes go, you can have the location going left to right, you can go uh, Birmingham to London, or you can go London to Birmingham, uh, and you can have the time scale so that early tasks start at the bottom of the page and work up, or they start at the top of the page and cascade down. So that is the most common situation that I find. And then if we put the same activities that we had in our bar chart, very simple plan. So we've got task A and we can draw that on the diagram with its start and end distance and its start and end time. And the unique thing that gives about is if I said, when will you be uh, at the end, end of one kilometer, then you can read that off the diagram. You can understand at what date you will reach that point. And if you've got that on a bar chart, you do not know that. So that's crucial information uh, of this whole technique. And also, you can see there's a bit of change of direction in that plan. So you can also visually see the rate of production. You can see one task relative to another. And later on, I'll show you, you can have within a single task, you can have changes of productivity. Uh, and that can be displayed on the diagram and it's giving you information. So if we put task B overlaid on that, it starts and ends after task A. But because of that change of production, you've got this problem. Two activities are taking place at the same time in the same space. So two crews have bumped into each other, two machines have crashed into each other, two trains of uh, potentially uh, so it's probably not that dramatic, but it there are things that you and you need to find that situation. You need to avoid that situation often, uh, or you can allow it, but primarily you try to avoid that situation. Tylos has 
unique features to allow that to happen in a way that you couldn't do it in any uh, traditional uh, planning software. And then you've got physical obstructions. So things like um, there's bird nesting season at a particular location, or there's a uh, this field is not going to be released to the road route uh, for legal reasons until some time later on and you have to find a way around that problem and again there are elegant solutions to that uh, in Tylos that are more difficult to find in a traditional software so so that's the the benefits and the and the techniques and why time distance time location time chainage they're all the same terminology uh, why that's useful but I want to turn to Tylos now and just convey two key pieces of information and one's about views uh, and so a view in Tylos is the, the thing that you're going to work on uh, and you can make new ones and it's a it's a graphical representation it's made up of cells a bit like Excel and you can stretch each cell and say how big it is and what it contains what sort of data so I'll start off with a time and distance cell at the beginning and those different shapes and colors and lines, they are the activities themselves. And we're going to return to that topic in a moment. But when you make that first cell of a view, you choose what the orientation is. Is time vertical or is it horizontal? And in my plan, it's vertical. So that blue stripe is a holiday period. Uh, and then I can create a second cell on top of the first one, and that's a distance cell. And in there, I can create my own distance ruler with as many rows as I want, different information in there. I can have another distance cell, and in there, I can include a map of the route. Uh, I'll show you, do, I'll be doing that shortly. You can have a time cell on, on the time axis, and here I, you can build your own highly flexible. Uh, time ruler where you don't have any restriction on the number of rows or columns that you might have if you've got resources on the plan or cost you can see individual quantities of those so Tylos doesn't do resource leveling but it does very good resource planning and you can have a period graph so we can see uh, how much money uh, man hours cubic meters of spoil are in a time period week month hour minute etc so that either in a period uh, and also cumulatively we can graph um, unique points along the distance axis so things like uh, stations on a railway overhead line mast positions bridges over a motorway that sort of thing uh, people want to pick those out uh, and you can also graph resources and costs on the distance axis and you can have a distance gantt chart as well which is quite an intriguing and useful thing but also there's a special module within Tylos where you can have what's called a mass hall diagram and I will also be talking about that a little bit uh, later on so um, so that's a view and that's what you work on on screen and you can print it off and it's exactly what you get and you can have multiple views so you can have a distance slice so I can say well um, so I've got graphics in this view as well. I've got a legend of what these different colors and patterns mean, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. And uh, we can have uh, graphic files embedded to demonstrate logos or other illustrations and a title block. But we can also say, well, that's fine, but I'm going to have another view that's only showing me what's happening in October and November and only between 1.5 and 2.5 kilometers. So we can zoom in on that footprint as well as having a traditional filter based on other criteria so views are important to understand i'll be using views uh, and but you can obviously create them in tylos and views are like views in power project or microsoft project or layouts in p6 but unique to tylos is the idea of a task template so different tasks have a different appearance how do we nominate that appearance so tasks are just as they are in all those traditional systems they've got to start an end date logic links resources calendars all of those things and a number of tasks that go to make up a project which can be all seen in a view and but when we create a task in tylos before 
we create it, we nominate a task template. And the task template is a library of shapes and colors and line styles and fill patterns. So we're saying that all topsoil strips is going to be a brown line or all culverts are going to be a yellow box. So we make a library with topsoil strip in it and culvert in it. So when we create a task, we just say it's one of these things and it has already got that appearance. So having that pre-prepared library uh, is the starting point. And not only can it have a shape and a color, it can have a rate of production. So we can strip topsoil at 120 meters an hour or some productivity rate. Uh, and it can be preloaded with resources uh, and costs. So we're going to have this particular machine, two men, 15 litres of diesel an hour, uh, and it's going to cost X. So all of that can be pre-prepared. So it's more like a library of prototype tasks that don't yet exist, uh, which we're going to use. So now I'm going to turn uh, to the software uh, itself. <clears throat> so um, I've already got uh, Tylos open on screen, so it's quite a sparse interface. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project from scratch. OK, so and I'm going to base it on a template. So this is like Excel or Microsoft Project or Word. So it's a file that I can email around. It's not a big database that we don't have access to. Um, so I'm going to nominate a starting point, And this has already got task templates, views, calendars already created in it, for example. And this is uh, these things are installed when you get the software and you can obviously adapt them. And now we need to say a few things about the um, product, the, this particular project. So I'm going to say that this is the, uh, the A14 dual carriageway. And uh, it's um, we have a unit of measure. So should we be in thinking about meters or kilometers or even miles and yards? Uh, and I'm going to do it in meters. So I've got a 15 kilometer uh, road that we're going to be working on. And we're going to do this from. Uh, so we're uh, the, it's coming up. So we're, we're tendering on this. It's on the 4th of January next year. And time has got more of a uh, importance in Tylos. So we need to put a time as well as a date in and we anticipate this project going on till um, later that year so we need to put in the footprint of what's it called when does it start and finish in distance when does it start and finish in time and and a couple of other things here so um, when we click on apply it's going to take a copy of the template save it uh, on this any any file that this can reach. OK, so it doesn't like my U drive, so I'm going to have to just um, change the destination where we put that. So then we've got the user interface that I want to take a moment to just talk about so that you're vaguely familiar with what's happening. So on the left hand side of the screen, we've got this section we call the Explorer. So this shows us the as a tree structure, all of the uh, views that we talked about, uh, project data and data in the main library itself, all of which can be created in advance. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you've got this large area that we're trying to make as large and uncluttered as possible. And this is our time distance diagram. Um, down below are a series of tabs, and these change depending on what we click on. And all of these things are obviously uh, interrelated. So, um, so let's just uh, get rid of those because also there's quite a lot of buttons. So there's a whole series of buttons up here about uh, housekeeping, save, undo, redo, and then there's a bunch of stuff here about changing the zoom scale on screen. All of these are going to be used to do something on the body of the diagram, and you get tool tips as you hover uh, over uh, any button. So um, that's a quick tour. So we uh, expand and collapse these things in the Explorer, as you would expect. I'm going to open a view that's already created, uh, and I'm going to double click on that. So this window 
uh, is now about this this layout this view and what I want to do first of all just to show you how these things work is I'm going to put a diagram in this particular um, box here so what I'm going to do is go on to this um, toolbar button click on it and I'm going to set a couple of parameters which I can change later so I want it to scale horizontally and the top left hand corner is going to be where we anchor this box in relation to the cell and I'm going to open the um, I'm going to open a picture to include in there. So, so any graphics file, uh, and you can, we can do other sorts of files. Uh, and so you can see there now I've got a picture inside that that cell, and I can scale it and change it. So the blue uh, two-headed arrow change it, four-headed arrow just move it around. And we've also got these vertical and horizontal sticks that you can adjust, and you can. Uh, set that against this distance scale because we know that this starts at 1500 meters and goes to 15,000 so we can locate it exactly because we can scale it by distance so it's full of things like that we can put logos in the on the right hand side and we can do uh, a bit of excel so as a title block so I'll perhaps do that so if I want to <clears throat> scale this in both directions and connect it to the bottom right of the diagram uh, I'm just going to draw a box in that area and in there I'm going to not bring in a picture I'm going to bring in a bit of a, a windows object so this is object linking and embedding so I'm going to open a file that is a starting point with the print area set and so when I say OK, it's starting Excel in the background uh, and then it's allowing me to display its contents. I can edit Excel by double clicking on one of the blue editing handles uh, and I can say in Excel. I can't connect the data in the project, I can't embed data, uh, but there are other ways of doing that. So when I save it, you can see that being changed uh, on screen. So so you this layout so it's half it's like half using a CAD system and half using a project planning tool but let's, let's turn to the project planning aspect of it so um, so we're going to look at the library where we've pre-created some task templates and I've got mine in sort of a hierarchical arrangement which is possible uh, and the very first thing we're going to do is do some topsoil stripping now even if I can't see all of that when I create a new task manually I click on this button insert a new task and I've still got access to the library that I want to get to so I've nominated a task template which is defining the shape and the color and other things potentially and I'm saying well from this point on the screen to this point over here and as I do so you can see along the top of the screen that the uh, distance and time the duration and the length is being set and of course I can um, edit this manually so I'm doing it on this toolbar but I'm also with this object selected it's got the blue editing handles I can still move it around in the same way that we did before but I can change the name here and uh, change the dates and everything uh, so just as you really would expect so it's going to take me 25 days but unlike a Gantt chart you do not have a spreadsheet area a column area on the left hand side or the right hand side to display information so in Tylos you do that by adding a text annotation so this is the possibly the trickiest thing to get to grips with because there's no ideal layout so we can type information in this box so we could start starts on and rather than putting a date in there or a distance I can press the F8 function key that this little bit of help talks about here and pick from a list uh, I want to say it starts on a certain date so I can pick a date a start date for about the schedule in various formats and I'm going to say also that we can 
put the at sign and then I'm going to choose a distance, a start distance uh, in even though I'm entering it in meters, I'm going to display it in kilometers. So I'll just do the same for the end date. So ends or finishes on uh, F8, the date, but now from the end group. So you've got these tokens, as they're called, uh, and they allow uh, changes to the data without having to change the uh, annotations themselves. So, uh, and it's a useful, very useful technique and you can add them to the task template. So it's there every time you want to do it. So I don't want it at the start, uh, I want it at the end. So it's over there and I want the bottom right hand corner of the box to be connected uh, and I can pick it up and move it and I can spin it around through uh, 360 degrees. Uh, I can give it a different font and a different background color. So I want it to be white, I want it to be a bit bigger and bolder so that is now connected to the activity and as it moves around you'll see the uh, information change so so you know that has to there's there's quite a bit of preparation and all of that can can live in the task template library and be used so i've given this task a duration uh, and now i'm going to have a second activity so i'm going to create another new activity I'm going to choose a different item from the um, from the library here. So I'm going to say that we've got a fencing diversion, uh, and so and that's going to take us uh, 40 days, perhaps. Uh, and if I don't like the colour of that because we've chosen it badly, I can. I can change it here and I can enforce that. And I can change the line style of that as well. We don't have to have solid lines. We can have any sort of line and you can make your own lines even. Um, and we can say, well, uh, that's how did I arrive at 40 days? So we can calculate the duration of an activity. So we can say, well, um, not only can I give it a distance, I can give it some calculation. So I want to calculate the duration of this activity from the fact that I've looked in the bill of quantities and there's 16,000 cubic meters of work to be carried out or linear meters or, and we can do, um, well, four, so it's linear meters in this case, uh, and we can do 400 a day. So, if, uh, but if we could only do, um, 325 a day then it would take us longer so you can have this um, direct impact by plotting the productivity directly in Tylos and then we can link these two together we can say when this is started this other one can start here and it can start 10 days afterwards so if we then reschedule that we can see the knock-on impact so if we were to start this uh, a week later we can immediately see the knock-on impact. So Tylos includes the full critical path calculation. We can import information. We're going to talk about that with more traditional systems. But what it's got uniquely is the ability to do use distance as part of its calculation. So I've got some other things happening at a certain place, like a culvert or a bridge, uh, and it's going to take us uh, 25 days to do that. So the ideal place for that to happen would be just about then. If we did it too early, it would be uh, happening before we've moved the fencing and that would just be disruptive. If we leave it too much later, uh, then we're going to, uh, could have done it earlier. So we want to find a way where those two things uh, meet. And so we can create a logic link uh, and we could give it the traditional um, Sorry, I'm just changing this to a finish to start link. A start to start link. We want this to start to start link. And it looks to be about one, two, three, four weeks. So say 20 days. And so if I reschedule that, then you can say I was a bit short. So maybe 15 days. But it is a bit of a trial and error. There's no, well, that's good. But then if we were to change the productivity on this or the whole thing moved down, um, suddenly it would be in the wrong place. So 
we can take this link and rather than using time as a constraint, we can use distance as a constraint. So we can say that no part of that yellow box can bump into any part of that blue line, regardless of the uh, position or duration uh, of that uh, blue line. So that's a completely unique ability. So where tunnels meet uh, shafts, uh, where stations meet track, those sorts of uh, calculations are extremely uh, important. So, so as you can see, TARS includes that data. It's great for sort of tendering and thinking through a problem. Uh, but what I want to do, I'm going to close this uh, particular one and I'm going to open one that I uh, created earlier so we can talk about some other features and we can move on into uh, some uh, more interesting areas so those fundamentals are in place this is a sort of typical schedule um, and <clears throat> we can also have um, different distance sections defined and we do that in Tylos by in the project data under the distance section we've got things called a sector profile and that's where we can define as a little spreadsheet something with a name and a start and end distance and it could have a reference to uh, something where it can get its color from so people often put those in for example a ruler so we can you know we split this job into three sections we can indicate where they are uh, this is perhaps a road job as well and we've got a couple of bridges so we can indicate where those bridges are in the header and we can also include that information on the body of the Diagram. So if I click on the main part of the diagram and we go to the grid section, we've got a grid line setting here. But if we reveal this same line set, we can put a drop line down the whole page and give it a label if we want to. So that label will stay with it as it moves. Um, we can see where the bridges are. We can even use that as guidelines to create activities precisely between those locations. So, um, so these uh, sector profiles, as they're called, which is like a spreadsheet where you've got two distance values, uh, are uh, very, very useful. And you see that used time and time again uh, in uh, to demonstrate interesting features on possibly both sides of the road or track. Uh, where you can pick out uh, sections of say wooded areas or um, flooded areas or uh, cut and fill areas those sorts of uh, that information but there are also things called distance uh, profiles and so they are where we've got a single um, single value single distance value and then a number associated with it so uh, so that's used in two cases here so one is that i've got two lines um, so every 100 meters along this road we've got the ground we've got the ground level height and then we've got the proposed road height and we can take those two values away from each other so we can graph that in tylos so that is not a picture that's coming from the values in this table so we've got so when we get to one kilometer um, the land is at already at 38.9 and the new road will be at 40.5 so we've got a so the <clears throat> uh, green areas uh, are uh, a cut and the blue areas are a fill so you know you can you can have that sort of vibrant information uh, to cultivate people's understanding of the job but also uniquely we can use that to affect the duration of activity so rather than it just taking us 45 days to do this we can look at this particular activity and if we go to the calculation tab we can say well I you've seen that we can set the duration when it's a uniform product rate of production but we can take that data from a distance profile so at certain points along the way we're going to change our productivity as set in this profile and we're going to take the values from that profile and say that well if we can only do 450 is our benchmark 100 percent that's the impact on the schedule of having 
uh, that information be lying behind it. So you don't have to have a single, uh, you can have a single activity with a with a shape to it. You don't have to have multiple activities. Of course, with the distance links, it's got a brilliant, unique effect on working out what this project is going to be like. So uh, completely unique aspects uh, in that regard. So we've also got, uh, as I alluded to at the beginning, resource information. So in the library, we can make resources. They can be hierarchically organized. We can have uh, machinery, labor, and uh, materials. All can be defined uh, separately. I've got a view already set up, which we can look at. So having defined those resources, and you can right mouse click and add a new sub resource here. Resources have got a lot of information on them. So if I double click on that, you see that we got shed loads of information that's uh, useful. So we could take an activity uh, where, and if we look at that activity, this is the resources that we've inherited from the task template. In this case, I might need four of these people, not three. So I can change that value and we can see that value change uh, in a histogram. If I undo that change, um, you would see that change uh, on the screen. So that's how resources can be viewed. You can have one per one per individual resource with a quantity and you define a color set for that. And also I've got one here of, of all resources and the weekly uh, man hours from everything happening in that week. So we've got that as red bars and the blue line is the cumulative value shown in this table. So everything you see on screen is what you get when you print it out. And that could be financial values uh, as well. So. Um, so what we often uh, interact with, we interact with other systems uh, in the world. So, um, so I'm going to show you how we would take some information out of Tylos. I'm going to put it in Excel, change it in Excel, bring it back into Tylos. But we could do the same thing to, um, say, Microsoft Project, P6, or Power Project. So if we want to export, first of all, and so this is where I would choose my destination. Some of these are extra modules that you've got to pay for. Everybody gets this one, which is the Windows clipboard. So we say, I want to send it to the a, a CSV file or the Windows clipboard. And then what do I want to send, send there? And where should it, what column should it live in? So there is this idea of a profile, which you can define and have different ones. So defining the date format, for example, but also what do we want to send from all the data that's possible to send uh, and which column should it live in when it gets there. So these are the sort of the rules of which information we want and where it will be in which column. So if we click on OK, it's exported that, put it on the clipboard and it's given us a quick heads up about that. So if we look at a spreadsheet now and we paste that, this information <clears throat> has come out of uh, of Tylos. So uh, we could um, sort that, for example, in here. It doesn't make any difference. Um, so I want to sort it by uh, task ID. Uh, and so I'm going to make a change to one thing. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to say, well, culvert. Um, this one, this culvert here, these values have changed uh, and I've just copied them from uh, another spreadsheet. So these things have changed from what they were before and I'm going to add some new data down here. I need to give it a different ID number so it doesn't clash with one that has already existed. But we've got another culvert uh, that didn't exist before. Uh, and I'm going to, again, copy it from another spreadsheet just to save time. So this this is happening at different dates. It's happening at a different location, but it's got the common uh, culvert reference. So it's going to be a yellow box when it gets created. So all of that, all of the highlighted items are new. So we just take that information back to the clipboard by copying it. We go back to Tylos. 
and we import it. And it's very typical that people import from a native P6 XML file. There's a detailed movie on our website about exactly what you do to achieve that. And basically, you've got to have the information that you don't have in project or or a, a traditional system. You need a column for a start distance, a column for an end different end distance, and a reference to the name of the task template or the ID of it. And that is uh, typically done in some systems with an activity code library, uh, or it could be a user-defined field. But we're doing it from the clipboard, and we're we can see it's there because it's grey. Uh, we're going to use the same profile, the same rules that we exported it to bring it back in. And there we can see it's updated all of these things and created one new one. So there's the change to the existing one that happened. And this is the new one that has just appeared. So um, so it's, it's I, you, people use Excel a lot as a productivity aid for very quickly editing whole groups of things. Uh, but uh, often Talos is used to visualize large projects and it's being fed by information, partial information coming from other systems of only those items that are happening in distance. So, um, so we've seen how uh, flexible it is. And I just want to turn to two other things uh, before we close the webinar. And one of those is about progressing. So uh, Talos again has got a unique aspect when it comes to uh, progressing. So um, I'm just going to uh, get rid of the, the grid lines again uh, of the bridges just to simplify the diagram. Uh, and um, uh, so I wanted the one with progress on it, which is this one here. So um, so this is just another view. And I'm displaying the, re the progress line, the report date, which is this blue line with the blue arrowheads. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a baseline. So a baseline is a snapshot at this moment in time. So this is um, my original plan. So it takes a snapshot of everything it needs to do earn value analysis. And you can have multiple baselines in a single file. And then we need to define when is time now? When are we recording progress? So uh, it's at the end of the month. And that's going to set this, this blue line on the screen. So if I return to the screen, that blue line has moved down. Everything behind that line should now have been done. So now we can go out into the field. We can ask our colleagues uh, and record for ourselves what's happened. So, um, so first of all, I'm going to take the topsoil strip. I'm going to look at the topsoil strip and look at the progress tab because a key idea in Tylos is that different sorts of activities can be progressed in different ways. I can progress by distance. I can see, say, how much have we done? Where are we now in distance? I can do the same thing with quantity. So I've done 1120 linear meters of 1500. Uh, I can do it in task steps of predefined bits that make up 100%, or I can do it as in percentage terms. So in this case, it's a distance task. So I'm going to use distance as that process. I'm going to right mouse click and get the dialogue behind it so you can see what's going on. And uh, so we've worked the whole time from the beginning of the project to now. Uh, and where that line would cross the report date at this point, we should have got to 12K. So it's telling us the actual progress, the planned progress would be you'd be on program if you got to this point. So the fact that we've only gone to 11K means we're going to be a bit behind because we've done it in uh, in less in more time than, than we were allowed for. So I've set my highlighting of completed activities to be a sort of marker pen background. So the bits that have got big yellow highlighting, and there are many other ways of doing it, uh, is uh, they, that's completed. This bit is yet to be done. So you'll see that bit's going to get moved after time now. So we're doing the same thing with the um, spore removal. We're going to uh, we're going to progress that. 
Uh, and the thing about that was that it didn't start until uh, a week late and they missed out the first kilometer. So there was some access problem. They couldn't get into that area. Uh, and so they've gone to um, 5,250 uh, is where they've achieved. So that's what they've got. That's where they've got to. There's a little bit up here that hasn't been done yet and that'll get moved by the reschedule. And there's a bit here that remains to be done. Now this culvert is not a distance item. It's a fixed object. So I'm going to progress it by percentage. And I'm just going to say um, that we've done 10% of that. Uh, and we started it earlier than we anticipated. We started at the beginning of that week. Uh, and so you can see those impacts. So if we now schedule that and we've got a little bit of the, of the work here and we've got this work pushed ahead and we can compare it with our baseline. So uh, task got a unique aspect by recording where you've actually got to and there's no argument about uh, about those things as there are uh, in other systems. So um, if it's a linear project, you can't do better. You cannot do better than Tylos. It's got another unique aspect, and that is something called Mass Hall. So um, I'm going to give you an example of that. I've got a much more complex one to show you later on. So Mass Hall is where we're building a road or or a railway or uh, and it's usually across um so this is quite an unusual situation in the uk hs2 being a classic right now uh, where we're going through the terrain and we've got to chop hills down and fill in valleys so we've got a nice even roadbed and so we can uh, find out where there are hills uh, and we can indicate uh, what are called mass areas and the quantity of materials available at that space and we can create those manually in Tylos or we can import them so the so underlying that are some mass what's called mass types so that is fundamental types rock uh, spoil uh, things that have been cut filled so you there's a sort of mass type creation and then in the project data um, there's um, there's uh, mass areas, and then we can say, well, we're going to take this section uh, and we're going to move it, and we're going to put it in this big hole here and fill up that hole. So how much of that fills up that hole is uh, demonstrated by these sort of purple um, temperature gauges. So all of that, that 13,100 has been uh, moved uh, and, and is all gone because it's filled up, but it hasn't completed, filled up the hole. So we're going to take this one as well uh, and we're going to uh, move it to there and it won't overflow it, but it just happens to fit exactly. So so I've got these, which are these called? These are the hall lines. So we create the mass hall areas based on a certain type of material. We can set definitions about how fast we can do this, how much quantity we can move. Is the material, does it shrink or bulk up as we excavate it, move it and compact it? And then we can right mouse click on one of these lines because that is the activity and we can say, that we want to keep create a pair of activities. We're going to cut it, we're going to move it in distance, uh, and we're going to fill it. And the duration of these events is driven by that calculations that you've seen before, which are defined in the library. So, um, so if I uh, undo that creation, we can do it with all of those lines. I select one line, I do Control A. I've selected all of the lines, and so now we can create a whole uh, cut and fill diagram in uh, this manner and then you've got other activities happening afterwards so uh, Tylos is uniquely good at uh, demonstrating and using as a basis for planning the mass hall uh, 
aspects. And so if we look at the impact, those resources are on the activities and we can see the impact in these graphs of um, uh, what our stock crusher stockpile looks like uh, and how much spoil we've we've actually moved to date so uh, so it's rather good at doing those sort of things so there's one other um, item I want to talk about and that is uh, it's heavily used in rail projects particularly uh, in light rail projects so um, and I want to show you some really good productivity aids uh, in tire loss so uh, so I've got so we're going to do a small amount of work overnight or over a weekend and rather than taking individual tasks and building individual stages and linking them together we typically do things uh, as in standard ways and these standard ways are represent pre-planned as a fragment of a project a fragnet where we've got all of the tasks and we've linked them together uh, in advance so then we're going to say well um, we're going to take the content of that we're going to not just plan to do a single task we're going to do a task group and then we're going to draw a rectangle so it's going to be starting at that time and it's going to fit into this area and it's it's this particular sort of um, standard way of doing it and we're going to start work at this time and in that footprint so it's going to scale uh, by distance the elements have already been predefined and it's using certain parameters and certain resources so if we you look at the this representation this is a train which has got certain wagons and they're full of ballast uh, or they're going to take the ballast that's been excavated and it's calculated that there are 20 wagons and the length of that train is shown on the diagram so the train is sitting on that bit of track whilst it's happening and then at the end of the process it's sitting on this bit of track because it's it's filled up its last wagon here so we can take that and these are defined uh, in the library so we can look at the res the allocated resources of that and so our wagon is a wagon called a falcon it can hold 54 tons of material and for that amount on this uh, whole task we're going to need 20 wagons and that is calculated from the fact that uh, this is the amount of material uh, and it's been driven from uh, it's a special calculation tool that the the industry uses if it's got curves or uh, and they say how many tons per distance in this case a length so if we say well there's only 26 uh, in our sorry there's only 26 in our balance calculator result so that is then going to reduce the total quantity of material to be exp excavated and it means we need less wagons and so the length of the train is shorter and that's got a massive impact on when the following operations can start and we can calculate the whole thing so uh, having a preset um, standard ways of doing things and a good library can be a really uh, powerful uh, result we can generate of all the resources on this diagram we can instantly generate a histogram uh, for everything so um, so there are all the steps all the all the resources we need and we can also show it as a gantt chart as well as a time distance diagram so if i double click on that this is a standard gantt chart you don't necessarily need any other companion software to export it to and draw a Gantt chart you do have all that information directly in Tylos so um, there's one other tiny little aspect we can draw a map at the top here so if we uh, where we the very beginning we imported a map we've got we can have graphics within the system so I can draw a box and in that box I'm going to insert a symbol from the library I made this symbol with the graphics of Tylos as part of its library and there's one called um, worksite so um, by doing that we've defined where it starts and this is in miles and yards and what its length is uh, and what its length is uh, in 
miles and yards or meters. So it's 561 meters long. If I said, well, uh, it's 600 yards long, that's how big it would be. So it's a bit tedious to do that manually. So people have built up libraries of the typical things you find on on the route. So what we find on route are these symbols, the names of symbols in the library. The yellow things are what I've edited. So then we take that information, copy it to the clipboard, right mouse click in this area and import them. So it references items in the library, it automatically creates them. So it can really, you can put a whole plan together within minutes, you know, that would take quite a lot of effort any other way. So, um, so Tars really has got some very unique aspects. So I've run through the A to Z of it, and I just wanted to throw up some other big diagrams to talk about it at the end. So, um, so this is a large and complicated mass hall diagram. So those sort of things happen as well. So this is a road job that again, uh, somebody said, and I think this is interesting here at the top, there are many, many of these ruling lines and they all indicate where there are certain assets along the route and you know what the location of them are. So this is a sort of header information strip and it's only down below that you actually have the uh, activities on the body of the diagram and it's a, again a very powerful mechanism of showing that sort of information there's a very long pipeline here several hundred kilometers and the thing about there is that they can we can have um, less productive periods so there are often uh, seasons of earthwork people don't work between October and March or whenever it is and we can we can represent that and have that as an impact on the active actual activities on the program lots of uh, resource graphs here and that is the profile of the mountain ranges that it was going through uh, and finally the most complicated one ever which is Crossrail a uh, large underground railway in London and Tiles was used extensively in the tunneling and the fit out so um, it is uh, larger than your average plan though. So um, so I'd, I'd thank you for your time and I hope you've got out of it what you wanted and I will um, send the recording and you can watch it at your leisure. And if you've got any questions,